Morph targets store the polygonal position of a mesh into the computer memory. Let me show you an example. I'm going to grab a cube, drag it right there, press edit, make polymesh 3D. I'm going to come down to my morph target. I'm going to store a morph target. Now just by pressing shift I'm going to open deformation so I can have both open. And I'm going to turn this cube into a sphere by using spherize in the deformation palette. Just a few times and I'll just smooth that out a little bit. Now when I press switch I'm going to go back to the position that I stored. Every time I press switch, I'll go back to the position and then back to the other position. Now the morph slider on a positive is going to bring me back to the position I had before, which was a square uh, cube. And if I go the other way, it's going to push those points in the opposite way. And cube and sphere will give you this result. Right now I'm morphing both X, Y, and Z positions all at the same time. If I clear X, for example, I'm only morphing Y and Z positions. So I get this result. If I remove Y, I'm only going to morph the Z position. And I get that result. So you kind of get the picture. To demonstrate what morph width and morph white height will do, I'm going to change the size pressing spacebar coming to my move tool my gizmo and I'll change the size of this sphere so if I press switch again go back to the small square and this is my new form and now if I now use morph width it will start going into the width of the square so morph width again morph width again and it starts getting there so I'll just control Z this modification and now I'm doing this on the X, Y, and Z. If I take X and Y, for example, I'll only morph it on the Z. And it's a bit hard to see, but if I turn around, that's what's happening. It's morphing back to the square, but only on the Z axis and on its width. Same thing goes for the height. So if I just come to height, and I keep morphing it, it keeps going there. Now the width and the height they work in this way, the morph not so much because if I morph to a square and then I keep morphing nothing's gonna happen. Morph distortion is gonna give a kind of a smooth transition and it's gonna smooth up the distortion for so for example if I do a morph height a couple of times and I use morph distortion it's gonna smooth out that distortion. And morph distortion works really well with project morph. Now project morph it's similar to the morph slider but it uses a projection algorithm. So if I project you see it doesn't go back to a, a square it just projected one form into the other. Now if I use my morph distortion it starts removing that distortion and eventually it gets to a square it's not the same thing as the morph as the morph slider. Now there are two algorithms for project morph, and I'll show you one. And in ZBrush, when you have this little circle here and you press it, you change the algorithm and it behaves differently. If I bring it all the way down to the right, right now, not much is going to happen. You won't be able to see a difference because of uh, I changed the scale of the of the shape, but if I go back, I'll delete this morph target, store another one, and I'll spherize it again. Leave it like that. So now without changing the size, if I use project with this algorithm, this is the result I get. To the other side, it's a blend it's a different algorithm and gives you different results. So you can use this to your advantage and create some really cool shapes using just these techniques of morph targets. 
Let's talk about this button right here, Create Difference Mesh. This is the only button that I haven't talked about so far. And I'm not going to use deformers because uh, it usually creates a weird uh, flipped faces uh, situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my move brush. You can access your move brush by going BMV. And I'm going to pull out a little bit, uh, a little something here. I'm going to change the, the topology with my brush instead of using deformers. And I'm going to create different mesh. And this creates a new mesh in my subtool, in my tool palette with the difference, with what I've changed. So you can see this, this is a very powerful feature. Very powerful feature, and we're going to explore it in later videos and show you different ways, different creative ways that you can use this. And also, any of these sliders uh, on this playlist, we're going to be creating some more videos about this. Now, just to quickly talk about this, you also have layers, and these are different, several layers that you can have, and in each one of these layers is acts a bit like a a morph target. It's very similar to the morph target. It doesn't have the same uh, capabilities, but uh, it's very similar and you're gonna need this. Morph targets and layers are very useful and you should definitely use them. And we're gonna talk about that in the next videos in this playlist. Next video is gonna be about layers. We're gonna explore a little bit about layers and how do they work. So I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, press the little bell for notifications of new videos. And if you can please support me on Patreon, I'll be very thankful. I'll see you in the next video.